This video lecture discusses river transportation, with a focus on barge tows as a means for transporting goods. Support for the development of this lesson has been provided by the National Science Foundation through the Ohio University Boat of Knowledge and the Science Classroom program. We already have vehicular highways. Why would we even consider marine highways? Isn't river transportation part of a bygone era? It's true that marine highways are once again being considered as a means of transportation, but why? Do you think marine highways are more or less efficient than traditional highways? Which do you think can carry more, a semi-truck or a tow of barges? Marine highways are far more efficient than traditional highways. A single barge can carry the equivalent of 70 trucks, which means a typical 15 barge tow is capable of hauling as much as 1,050 semi-trucks can carry. You might argue that barges are much slower than trucks, so it wouldn't be worth the time to move goods along the river. While it's true that barges are slower, there are other benefits that outweigh the time aspect. Marine transportation is better for the environment. It results in fewer hazardous spills than truck transportation, can achieve almost four times more ton miles per gallon of fuel, and reduces carbon dioxide emissions by almost 73% compared to trucks. Marine transportation is also a safer means of transporting goods. Only one river transportation related fatality is reported for every 155 truck transportation related fatalities. Marine transportation also has the added benefit of reducing traffic congestion on highways. Marine transportation is one of the earliest modes of transportation, predating both the invention of the wheel and taming of horses. Over the centuries, marine transportation has evolved immensely, beginning with the earliest rafts, hollowed out log canoes, and skin on frame boats before more sophisticated designs were developed. The earliest marine vessels depended on manpower, but as trips became more lengthy, designs began to harness the power of the wind. Finally, in 1807, a new form of marine transportation emerged, the steamboat. Harnessing mechanized power, Robert Fulton designed a steam-powered boat that was able to cover the 150-mile distance from New York City to Albany in just 32 hours. This invention revolutionized marine transportation into an era of barges, steamships, ocean liners, and stern wheelers. It's no coincidence that several ancient civilizations sprung up around waterways. Rivers were the backbone of great civilizations like Mesopotamia, Egypt, India, and China because they supported easy trade with other civilizations. River transportation has changed substantially between then and now. Rivers used to be the primary means of transportation for both people and goods, particularly in early America when dense forests made travel by land nearly impossible. Even when trains and automobiles were initially available, infrastructure was lacking, and purchase of an automobile was a privilege only the wealthy could enjoy. Now river transportation is limited primarily to non-perishable industry goods like coal and steel. This transportation mode shift was due to the introduction of trains, automobiles, and airplanes. Now 89% of the households own at least one car, and passenger planes are used on a daily basis for longer trips. Rivers are rarely used, even for the transport of goods. However, as we saw before, rivers possess a great capacity that is not being utilized. How do we determine the capacity of a river? How many tows can traverse a river each day? How much material can each tow transport? The answer depends on four factors. What do you think these factors are? River capacity is dependent on the number of barges in tow, the speed of the tow, and the number of locks and dams. The number of barges in tow depends on the water depth, the size of locks and dams, and the river width. Along the Ohio River, 15 barge tows are most common, while the Mississippi River can accommodate up to 40 barges per tow. How fast can the tow go? 
Make a guess of the maximum speed you think barge tows are capable of reaching. Speed of tows ranges from 3.5 to 10 miles per hour, but the average is often around 6 or 7 miles per hour. Speed is influenced by the river width, number of turns, water depth during normal flood and drought conditions, locking time at locks and dams, the horsepower of the tugboat, the number of stops along the route, and the waterway congestion. Locks and dams have enhanced river transportation by addressing steep drops and shallow pools in the river that used to limit travel by boat. Dams create pools deep enough for boats to safely traverse through, while the locks act like a water elevator to gradually step boats from one pool to another. What happens during locking time? How do you think the water elevator works? First, the boat enters the lock chamber. Once inside, water is filled or drained from the lock, depending on whether the boat needs to increase or decrease in elevation. When the water level inside the lock chamber matches the elevation of the pool that the boat will enter, the gates are opened and the boat leaves the lock. Notice that in the schematic, the lock chamber is gravity fed and does not require any pumps to fill or drain the water. The Ohio River has 21 lock and dam locations that are operated and maintained by the Army Corps of Engineers. Each location provides an elevation change of 10 to 37 feet in order to account for the 460 foot drop in elevation over the 981 mile distance between Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Cairo, Kentucky. Let's review the key concepts covered in this lesson. Take a few minutes to try to answer these questions before continuing the video to the solutions. We discussed six benefits of river transportation. Efficiency, fewer hazardous spills, more ton miles per gallon of fuel, fewer fatalities, lower carbon dioxide emissions, and reduced traffic congestion. The three factors that determine river capacity are the number of barges in tow, the speed of the tow, and the number of locks and dams. The purpose of locks and dams is to create a series of pools deep enough for travel and without fast drops in elevation. We said locks act like a water elevator. During locking, the boat enters the chamber, water is filled or drained from the lock, then the gate is opened and the boat leaves. To learn more about the benefits of marine highways, play the roads versus rivers game that is associated with this lesson. This game can be played as a board game or a role-playing game, depending on your preference. You will split into two groups and form a road team and a river team. Each group must try to deliver as much cargo as possible within the time limit. To do so, you will choose a route and follow the instruction cards along the route. You can also learn more about lock function by building a model lock system using aluminum trays. Once your lock has been built, try to lock a boat through. Try to go from the lower pool to the upper pool, and from the upper pool to the lower pool.